You are listening to Charting Wealth's comprehensive review and forecast for the week beginning Monday, the 8th of January, 2018. Thanks so much for being with us. Don't forget, those of you who missed the quarterly review that we published last week, we are republishing it with the email that goes out to all the subscribers with this comprehensive review and forecast. We'll also include in there a link to the quarterly training so you understand what the review's actually about. Those of you who've already taken it, you don't have to take that again, but you're welcome to. It's free and available to you. If you're not a subscriber, you need to be one. All you have to do is go to chartingwealth.com and sign up. It is priceless. It will not cost you a penny. We ask you to spend 10 minutes with us a day learning how to chart, charting, practicing, using our daily market, weekly market, and trade worksheets, and become a charting master. This is not a get-rich-quick scheme. We hope it will be a get-rich scheme for you. It is one that will require some practice and dedication, but all good things come to those who practice. Now, let's move through these charts, talk about where things are and where they may be going over the next week. Remember, we are not forecasters. We are trend followers. So let's delve into these charts. What do we see going on on the S&P 500 on the weekly chart? Up 0.67% for the day on Friday. And what do we see going on? Well, we have a big green open box up candle with a huge wick on top, portending lots of strong movement, which we saw over the week and continuing. Why? Because the price percent oscillator, which is our master indicator, great training at the chartingwealth.com website on that. Please take it along with the Heiken Ashi candlestick training and everything else we have there. We see that it is it is spiked over and moving up and away from the red signal line. A good sign for continued up movement. We also see that the derivative oscillator has pretty much stabilized. It started going down on the week ending the 29th and is now sort of stabilized. Again, we had that prior down week ending on the 29th of, Jan of December, and now we have an up week. Now remember, that wasn't a strong down week because it was a red open box candle, not a strong red down candle. We see those back at the end of August of this past year. Those are strong indicators of down movement. The one this prior week, and we talked about that during the course of the week. Sort of the caretakers were in charge. The people who run the market and such were on vacation, still enjoying their Christmas break and their New Year's break. But as we jumped back into this week, the exuberance started, things started moving up. Now we go from the weekly chart to the two-day chart. What do we see? Well, we had had that pullback on the two-day chart, and it switched back over for the two-day candle ending on Thursday the 4th. We're just into the latest half two-day candle, just this one day. The candle will complete drawing on Monday, and we'll continue to monitor things. But now we have the schizophrenia has ended, things are back, and the two-day candle is moving in the same direction as the weekly. We look at the four-hour chart. We saw it crossover going up back on the morning of the 3rd, Wednesday the 3rd of January, and has just continued to spike up. All those movements well above the Bollinger Bands, which are stretching out, showing lots of volatility on that four-hour chart. So we'll continue to watch things and see how this chart continues to rocket up. Remember, our last weekly vertical crossover going up occurred all the way back on the 29th of September and it has continued to just spike up wildly since then. What do we have? A jumping point, that fo a jumping in point that following week of somewhere around the one, the 250 mark, and up as high on this last Friday as 273.56 is about 24, 23 and a half dollars. A nice amount of appreciation on your practice trade from October to the beginning of January. I would say yes, that is quite sweet. That's the beauty of the weekly vertical crossovers. Now let's talk about that when what we saw, what did we see happen over the course of the prior week on the queues? We had a weekly vertical crossover going down, a weird one, at the end of the prior week. We told you our rule is. 
to look at the charts at 1030 on Monday, see what they look like. There was no jumping in point at all because the markets were already spiking the following Monday. So even though we had a weekly vertical crossover, there was no ability to jump into it. So what did we do? We waited to see how the week would end up. And now we have a weekly vertical crossover going up. That will be going out to all of our members who are in the states that can receive our text messages. We will let that go out today, texting everyone, letting them know to look at the markets on Monday for a jumping in point again at 1030 after idiot hour is over. That's the hour where the market makers have so much control of the market and we never jump in at the beginning of the market. We wait for things to settle out. Look around 10.30 to see how things look. If the market's trending up, you might have a good jumping in point to practice a weekly vertical crossover going up. Now, the derivative oscillator is continuing to lose energy, which is strange. We did have sideways sliding action, some up movement, and then some down movement over the course of the week ending the 29th. But now that we've had the spike moving up, derivative oscillator has just not shown that. The price percent oscillator has. So again, just keep your eye. Be aware of that. And again, watch price movement carefully over the course of the next week. What do we see on the two-day chart? Well, we see that derivative oscillator flipping over quite nicely at the same time that the price percent oscillator flipped over and moved up. And of course, we noted that. So now we have the two-day and we have the weekly moving in the same direction, which is beautiful for a jumping in point on Monday on the queues. Now let's look at the four-hour chart. It crossed over going up back on Tuesday the 2nd of January, and but for one pullback on the afternoon of Thursday, we've continued to see strong up movement really strong up movement in the queue. So keep your eye on things on Monday morning around 1030. See if you have a jumping in point. We didn't last week. Well, this week. And again, I'm talking about the Monday following that weekly vertical crossover going down. So on the 29th. So we didn't have a jumping in point on Tuesday. That remember the market was closed on New Year's Day this past week. We didn't have a jumping in point on Tuesday the 2nd. And now we potentially have one going up on the queues on this following Monday, that is the 8th of January. So we'll keep an eye on those things. Let's move from the Qs, the NASDAQ 100 tech stocks, to TLT, 20-year bond fund. It was down, and in fact, we have a weekly vertical crossover going down three weeks in a row, enough energy to cross over going down on TLT. We will go ahead and note that it moves from an up move to a down move. And we will, of course, change that. We'll also change the arrow. And we will have a weekly vertical crossover going into the next week. As we look at these charts, what do we see? Derivative oscillator still in the positive, but losing energy. And of course, we have the two-day chart already trended over going down back on the two-day candle ending on the 21st of December. That was a Thursday. And things really sort of went up and sideways since then, but enough energy for a weekly vertical crossover going down, and we shall continue to watch that. Now let's look at the four-hour chart <clears throat> and see what we see. It also just crossed in the morning on Friday going down. The four-hour chart did. Price movement is below the two-day, and we will look for a jumping in point going down on Monday around 1030. If you're interested in practicing a down move on TLT, you can sure do so. Again, use your trade worksheet. Look at how things look at 1030, and if TLT is trending down, you can sure practice a down trade on that. Now, those of you who don't understand, why would you look at entering any kind of trade when the ETF or stock that you're looking at is going down? Well, it's called taking a short position, and we have a great training online for you at chartingwealth.com under training on inverse funds, how to make money when markets crash. Please listen to that over the weekend. It'll give you an idea as to what we're talking about, about going short or buying an inverse fund 
and you can also consider puts when they make sense if you understand option trading. Now, let's continue to move along. We've got one more chart to view for you. And it's a down day for gold. You know, gold has been doing so much beautiful stuff. We also had a weekly vertical crossover on gold. That I, We've got so many vertical crossovers happening. And we have one now on gold. We have a vertical crossover that's going up. Vertical crossover going up on the Qs. And a vertical crossover going down on TLT. Well, we end the week with a beautiful weekly vertical crossover The uh, that's on the price percent oscillator. The derivative oscillator also crossed over, which is always a strong and good sign. We saw on the two-day chart back on the 22nd, a vertical crossover going up. And we have price movement well above both the weekly and the two-day. When we look at the two-day, though, we do see things sort of settling out there somewhere around 125, 125, 14, 15, something along those lines that we've, we've seen a topping occur over the last two and a half day. Uh, well, what's this? Five days, because remember, two two-day candles, and then we've only drawn the first half of the latest, so that's just one day. So that's five days of topping. Uh, we do see the derivative oscillator continuing to move up and the price percent oscillator on that two-day chart. But just keep your eye on those things. You'll see a little more as we look at the four-hour chart. Here's where we have our biggest concern on gold. And that is this four-hour chart actually is heading down toward the red signal line. Little concerned about that. So gold has had such a huge climb. And remember how accurate the four-hour chart has continued to be, even though around this time of year it typically stops being accurate. It crossed over going up back on the morning of the 14th and has continued to fly up with just a couple of pullbacks. But as we see the blue price percent oscillator head toward the red signal line and the derivative oscillator crossover going down gives us some concerns. So be aware of that. Be very, very aware of that before you consider jumping in to any kind of uptrade on Monday around 1030. Just be cognizant of it. Really keep your eye on the four-hour chart. Doesn't mean that it didn't isn't doing a little bit of fake out as it did back on the 19th of December, as it did back on the afternoon of the 15th of December, as it did back on the afternoon of the 3rd of January. So again, it can continue moving up. Just be careful and cognizant of it. Remember, the four-hour chart has been a total trading chart for us. Going against that can typically spell some doom. Folks, that's where we are as we end the day on Friday. We go into a brand new full week. Remember, this last week was a shortened trading week. And we so appreciate you being with us. You have questions, problems, concerns, let us hear from you. CW at chartingwealth.com is our email address. And we encourage you to go to the website chartingwealth.com. Check out all the stuff we have to offer and teach. We are here for you. God bless my friends. All the best from the entire team here at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.